worldwide. Hallelujah. We, we also want to welcome those who is here this evening. And we want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast online. We want to say thank you so much for being with us this evening. And we pray that this service this evening will be a blessing to each of us. In Jesus' name. So let's we open up and pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for it, Father. We're giving you a praise. We're giving you a glory. You are God who deserves all the praise and all the glory. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus with the things given and praise. And we thank you, Lord, for this service this evening. We thank you, Lord, that you will minister to each of us because you know the needs of your people. You know every situation and every circumstances what your people going through. And Father, we thank you that you are God who is above all the circumstances. You are God who is above all the circumstances and situations. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. And Father, we ask you, Lord God, as Pastor Larry come and ministering to us this evening, we ask you, Lord God, that you use him as your vessel, as your instrument to speak for him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. God is so good. He is the faithful God. Amen. He is Amen. the faithful God. No matter what you're facing in your life, no matter what the enemy do, you know that you just hold on to the Lord. You just hold on to the Lord. You hold to his word and know that God is able to turn around that situation. Know that God is more powerful in this situation. His word is truth, and His word will not return void, but will manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Well, we have a minister of music. We, we have a mighty man of God with us tonight, Minister Eric. So, and he's going to lead us into the praise and worship so let's we worship the lord let's we praise his holy name in jesus name amen amen hallelujah
I ask you, Lord, that you will show yourself strong on their behalf. Let your anointing flow freely. Let your healing anointing rest upon your people. And may your name be glorified because of it. Because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. We are nothing without you. Our righteousness is no more than filthy rags. But in you, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Father, for sending your Son to take the penalty of our sin upon his own shoulder and nailing it to the cross. God, we thank you. We bless your name. And now, Father, I bind every spirit of infirmity. I bind every spirit of sickness and disease. I command you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out now. Come out now in Jesus' name. And touch not the anointed children of God no more. I declare they are free. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. God, you declared it. I speak it, and I believe it, so it is done. And I give you the glory, Father, for what you're going to do today in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I was just sitting here, just worshiping God, just now, and, and all of a sudden, I'm in the glory. I'm up in, the, I'm up in glory. I see Jesus. And then I'm on Mount Transfiguration. I see Moses and Elias and Jesus. And I see Peter, James, and John that was there with him. And the glory of God began to come down and it just began to take my breath away. Folks, God is doing something to get our attention. And it would be such a wonderful thing if we would just allow ourselves to come in alignment with what God is going to do in our lives we will never be the same again we will never be the same again now father I not every ear to hear prepare every heart to receive make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free and be coming with you to give you the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name Amen. amen. And amen. Father, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand, every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God, giving praises to Amen. I receive that church. 
Amen, amen. God bless you. Take your seat. The presence of the Lord, if you can. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Mm. That's the second time in my ministry that God has taken me to Mount Transfiguration. Early in my ministry, the Lord took me to Mount Transfiguration. Amen. And tonight, he took me to Mount Transfiguration. Folks, we're about to experience the glory of God like we've never experienced before. Amen. We're about to experience God's glory Hallelujah. like we have never experienced before. And it's going to come with power. It's going to come with power. Amen. I hope y'all ready because God, this thing is just, it's just not take, it's just not getting ready to take off. It's not something that's, that's going to take a whole lot of time because God's going to redeem the time. He's going to redeem the time. Amen. And when we, and as we, and as we get on board and as we uh, just follow his lead, he's going to lead us. He's going to guide us into all truth and the truth is going to make us totally free. Make us free. Ain't that what he said? Amen. I believe it. Yes, amen. I believe it. Amen. I believe it. But tonight I'm just so thankful that he allowed me the opportunity to share his word. To be a to be a part of his of his team. <laughs> I'm a part of his team. <laughs> I'm on the way inside, glory. We don't lose. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, so I, I know if I'm on the winning team, that means you guys are on the winning team too. Amen. Amen. Batter up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I, I believe we're gonna be playing soccer this time, though. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I believe that God want to, I believe God wants to do something in our lives, and I believe He's already begun a greater work than we can imagine by the power of His Spirit. And as we continue to yield to Him, He's going to show Himself strong on our behalf. We may not understand what we are experiencing. Like right now, when I'm just right there and got caught up in the glory, I saw Jesus, then I, He took me to the Mount Transfigured. He was, I saw him in the clouds. Then he, then next, then I, I, I black, back my eyes, and I, the next time I, I'm at Mount Transfiguration, just like that, just like that, and I'm seeing Jesus standing there with Moses and Elias, and I see Peter and John, Peter, James, John over here, and I'm standing right there in the middle, and I'm just, I'm just in awe. God, you allow me this opportunity. Thank you, and the tears start coming out of my eyes. I couldn't hold back. Because his presence, his presence is so strong. It's so real. And folks, when you come in his presence, he start to, it, you know, you know when it started, when, it, when, when you start having mudslides and everything, all that loose stuff go to falling off the mountainside. When you come in God's presence, it began to, it began to break all that loose stuff off you that the enemy has tried to place upon you. And that's what happened. That's what I believe what happening. Whenever you come into God's glory, whenever you come in God's presence, the things that the enemy tries to place upon you, it always, be, it always drops off. Why? Because God wants you for himself. He don't want to share you. He wants you clean. He wants you pure. He wants you holy. Yes. Amen. And to experience something like that, man, it's not a joke. It's real. It's real. I wish all of y'all could experience that. I would love to see y'all faces when y'all, if God just let y'all come in, into that present and you, uh, you stand right there and you see him on Mount Transfiguration. And you see the glory of God coming down upon you. And all you can do is just sit there and cry because his glory is so strong. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. hallelujah. That was a wonderful feeling. A wonderful experience. I put it that way. A wonderful experience. 
Tonight I'm going to be releasing the healing anointing. Upon everyone that has a need in their bodies. Because I know that season is, we're in, the, we're in, the, we're in the, the winter season right now. And there's a lot of people sniffing. A lot of germs are floating around. And God wants you to continue to walk in divine health. Amen. Amen. He wants you to continue to walk in divine health. Even though you may come in contact with these things, if it touches you, it's going to die immediately. It's not going to, it's not going to penetrate your being. Amen. That's my confession over you. Every germ and every body that touched your body would die instantly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 I was last was yesterday. Uh, I, I was uh, I was I was in my office. I was studying. I was reading. Then all of a sudden, I just started coughing uncontrollably. And I laid my hand on my throat. I said, "In the name of Jesus, this is not from you. I rebuke and I get off me now. In Jesus' name." And that thing within seconds just gone. Had no more problem. See, you got to learn how to exercise authority over your body because God has given you the responsibility to, to take care of that body. That body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. amen. And He's given He has given you power to, to exercise authority over this body. Amen. Because you see, what you allow, He's going to allow. What you disallow, He's going to back it up. He's going to disallow it. That's why when I'm I'm, I'm going to share, I'm going to share. Tonight I'm going to share a little of my personal testimony of my, how God healed me because I believe that, that this is uh, going to be a beneficiary to some people because they think this healing business is just a hoax. A lot of people don't believe. They just think that it's just for a few people, but it's for anyone that believes. It's for everyone that believes. And I believe that God wants to uh, just minister to some people today. Amen. See, the word of God is one of the most powerful medicines that you will ever take. Amen. The word of God is one of the most powerful medicines that you will ever take. That's why, you know, when, when, back when I was sick, when I didn't know none. I didn't have no money to go to no doctor. Didn't have no insurance. I was living in the country and back off in the cotton fields in a little block house. Amen. One bedroom, one in a living room and a kitchen. Didn't have no bathroom. It was outside. <laughs> It was, a, it was outside. Baby. <laughs> the water didn't have no running water. The well was outside. It pull it by hand. Amen. And uh, this was in 1989. Now this wasn't back in the. This wasn't back in the 1700s. This was back in 1889. Something like that. So it was early. It wasn't that late. Amen. But the thing about it, folks, that the thing about it that when God put you take you and set you aside. See, I wasn't out there at my, at my request. I was out there at his, at his request because I, because I had became homeless. When I became a preacher, I got kicked out of the house. Can you imagine that? <laughs> living in my car. I'm a God and call me and preach and I'm preaching and I got kicked out of the house living in my car. I backed my car off into the woods because they wouldn't let me in, in the park, in, in the city park. They, they ran me out of the city park. The police did. Amen. They ran me, they come out there and they see, see the car out there. They come out and ran me out. Said, you can't stay out here. You got to go. I said, okay. I said, but I ain't got nowhere to go. He said, hey, that's not my problem. You got to go. You got to go from here. And so I left out of the city. I went back down to the country and I backed my car off into the woods. And I was so mad. And I laid up on the hood of my car and I started fussing at God. I started pointing my finger toward heaven. And I said, God, look what you did to me. Mm. You called me to preach, and I started preaching, and, and I started preaching to my family, and they kicked me out of the house. Now I don't have nowhere to, I don't have nowhere to go. I was just fussing at God. Mm. And you know what God said to me? He didn't fuss back at me. <laughs> he didn't fuss back at me. You know what he said to me? He said, be ye holy for I am holy. And I, and I thought that he had a nerve to tell me to be holy. <laughs> and he had a nerve to tell me to be holy. And I said, okay, God, I'll be holy. Just give me a place to stay. He said, look across the field. And I looked across that field. I saw an old block, a block house. And the grass had grown up 
halfway to the house and God said, that's where you will live. I didn't have money to, 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 to rent the place or nothing. Didn't have money for turning the lights on or nothing, the power on to the house or nothing. But when God said, that's where I live, God provided all of that. And so I went to my uncle and I got his tractor and his bush off. And I went there and cut all that grass around the house. And then the house started looking like a, like a house. And I looked inside, they had trash in the house as tall as this stand right here. Mm. I said, oh my God. I said, okay, I cleaned it out. I got it started cleaning out. I took it out of the backyard, put it in a pile, and I burned it. Amen. I cleaned and wiped the house, cleaned the house off, off real good. By the time I got it all cleaned up, now this is my, this is my testimony. By the time I got the house all cleaned up and ready for furniture, I don't know how it did. I don't know how it happened, but it seemed like it happened overnight. God filled the house with furniture and everything, with curtains and everything. And 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 I'm just here. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here just 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 just. I said, I, I'm just in awe at what God is doing. And uh, and I remember I was sitting down on the push. It was sprinkling rain. I said, God, you sure you want me to preach? I said, if you really want me to preach, it was starting to drizzle rain just a little bit. There was no sign of thunder, no sign of nothing like that. And and, and I said, God, if you really want me to preach, then let us strike the light and hit right out there in the center of that cotton field. And before I could get it out of my mouth, that light smacked that ground and I jumped up and ran in the house. And I said, okay, God, hey, I'm okay. <laughs> You know, I don't. You know, I, I won't ask you no more. I, I believe you. <laughs> I ran into the house, and, and and from that point on, I started studying the Word of God, and I said, Lord, what subjects you want me to preach on? Just tell me the subjects, and I and, and I start studying the subjects. One of the first subjects God gave me was healing. I wrote down from the concordance of my Bible. I wrote down every scripture pertaining to health, healing, and healed. I wrote them all down. I didn't have a computer that time. I wrote them down word for word. Amen. And then my next subject that he gave me was holiness. I wrote them all down. That's why I guess it's buried in my heart. Every time I, I'm always preaching about these areas because that's what's in me. Amen. Then I, 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 the next one was spiritual warfare. And I wrote, I, I just wrote down these scriptures. And, uh, and, and it was like, I had a book full of, I had a book full of scripture. And I and I and I was brought, I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach, and I'm hurting. I'm, I'm my body's in so much pain because I, I had burnt up my stomach with all that moonshine I was drinking when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah, I was a moonshiner. My daddy was a moonshiner. And my and me and my brother, we used to take it and sneak out with it, go to school. Amen. We used to go up in the front door, right out the back door. And come back when it's time to go back go home. <laughs> but that's not what I'm that's not what this is about. This is about what God did in the midst of all of that. Yes. Mm. I'll just share you know, give you a little bit of my background. See, so you know, I wasn't perfect. Don't don't I wasn't perfect on long by a long shot. I was a, one of the best heathens you could run up on at that time. But when God began to deliver me, mm. he delivered me from drugs, from alcohol. He delivered me from cigarettes, amen, and, 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 and all that took time. It didn't happen overnight, but as I began to read those scriptures, as I began to meditate on those scriptures, first of all, first, first thing that came was my healing. First thing that came was my healing. I began to read the scriptures, and then he, and, 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 and he, he, I was laying in my bed, and I was hurting, I was bald in a knot, and he told me, get up and read your Bible, and I got up and I ran to the door. And I thought somebody was out there messing with me, but there was no one there. And I went back to my bed. And as I was going back to the bed, I jumped back around to the window to see, make sure no one was there. And I didn't see no one. But then I was going back to the bed. Then I remember what I heard. It said, get up and read your Bible. And so I didn't have a desk. I had an ironing board. And I set my ironing board up. And I opened up my King James Bible, my Living Bible, and my Concordians, Matthew Henry Concordians, amen, and the Amplified Bible. And I... And I opened and I started reading, and I 
reading from the and I started reading from the book of from the book of Matthew and I read and I got down to the down I read I was reading for a while. Then I skipped some, then I went over to the book of Mark. And I and, and it brought it, it just opened up on the page on on chapter 16. And then I began to it began to grab it began to get my attention. You know when you read the word how the word of God jump off the page at you? If you just read it and all of a sudden it gets your attention. Then you want to go back and read again. Then it's, it gets your attention again. Every time it did that, I read it. And that was in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 through 18. Let's go there right now. I'm telling you, the word of God is one of the strongest medicines that you'll ever take. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. One of the strongest medicines that you'll ever take. And you don't, and, you, and there's no side effects. There's no side effects. Holiness. That's right. <laughs> Holiness, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Amen. But as we as we as I was as I was uh, as I was reading, the word of God just started jumping off the page, just started jumping off the page. I mean, it was just like it, it, it kind of shocked me at first when it first started doing it. But as I kept reading, it kept doing it, it kept doing it. And every time it jumped, I would read. Every time it jumped, I would read. And next thing you know, I'm beginning to understand exactly what God was saying to me through the word of God. I had never heard nobody preach that before. I had never heard no one talk about it before. I heard people talk about healing before. Because back then, Captain Coon was still living. And, I, you know, she used to talk about healing. R. Roberts was talking about healing. Kenneth Hagen was talking about healing. Amen. And, and a few other people was talking about healing back then. Amen. R. W. Shambach and all, and all them. Amen. And uh, uh, these people were talking about healing. But I had never in my life had ever experienced nothing like this. Amen. Here I am. I'm in there, I'm hurting like I don't know what. Been preaching, been preaching, holding my stomach while I'm preaching. Yeah. And I was just, Lord, I said, I need help. Yeah. I was in my bed crying that, that morning. Mm. And I, I said, God, I need help. Mm. And, I, and, and as I was talking to God, he said, get up and read your Bible. And I got up and ran to the door, but no one was there. So I went back and started reading my Bible like he told me. And, and then I, when I made it to Mark chapter 16, verse number 15, he said, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. See, he given me the commission to go. He telling me to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And 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 and, and listen, folks. I he gave me a vision of India. I had never been to India. I don't know nothing about India. Didn't know nothing about India. And I and but he started talking about India. And I and he started talking about New Delhi. And I thought, because see, I used to be a chef. And I thought he was going to give me a new business. Of, and I was going to call it New Delhi Saturday Buffet Bar. <laughs> <laughs> I had got a name for it and everything. <laughs> I would have gone. <laughs> huh? I would have gone. I would have, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, because that's what I, that's, I used to have people, my people used to run from, from hotel to hotel, whatever I, where am I cooking at? They used to run to where I'm cooking at. Amen. Because I was good. Mm. I was good. I was real good. Amen. But verse number 16 says, But he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. I didn't understand what he was talking about because I wasn't, I had just begun to come into the knowledge of the faith walk. Amen. And then verse number 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any of they shall not hurt them. Amen. And then it said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And that caught my attention because I was in so much pain. Yeah. And I began to read it over again. Because I, I've been, no matter how often I had read this, I never, it never caught my attention like it did this time. And I read it again. And he said, go into, go into all the world. He said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe in it, shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. See, verse number 17, verse number 18 really caught my attention the, the most. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devil? They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any of their things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And he said, I, I said, Lord, I don't get it. He said, read it again. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. They shall speak in the tongue. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any of their things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on and He said, read it again. Then all of a sudden, I'm reading this. 
in my heart, I see the answer to my question. And I said, Lord, I see it. Mm. I see it. You're not talking to the prophets, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. You're referring this message to whoever believe it. Mm. This is not, this is, even though the apostles and prophets, they're all going to hear it, they can, they can get involved with it too. But he's talking to people just like you and me. He's talking to everyday people. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Can you see what I'm saying? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. But what signs are you, what sign can follow you? What signs he's talking about that going to follow you that believe? They shall cast out devils. This is a sign. They shall speak with new tongues. This is a sign. They shall take up serpents. This is a sign. They shall speak with new tongues. This is a sign. Amen. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. This is one of the signs. When you understand, when I saw that, I said, oh my God. I said, oh my God, I see it. And now here I am now. I set my Bible down. And I said, Lord, I see it. I see it. I see it. I let my Bible down. I said, God, here I am, Father. I'm in so much pain. He said, and, yeah. and, and, I, and, and you just showed me in your word. You said, these signs are following them that believe. God, I'm a believer. No one believes you much as I believe you right now. I am a firm believer that you are God, that you want to touch my body. And, and, and I, here I am in, in pain. I'm talking to God. And, and, and I said, God, my body's in pain right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, you said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak in the tongue. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any dead things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hand. They shall lay hand. They shall lay hand. Who are you talking about? They. The believer. Verse number 17. These right. signs shall follow them that believe. The believer shall lay hands on sin. He didn't say you had to be a preacher. He didn't say you had to be a pastor. He didn't say you had to be a evangelist. He said, these signs will follow them that believe. And I said, God, I'm a believer. And I have hands. My body is sick. He said, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I held my hands up to God. I said, God, I'm sick. Here go two hands. My body's in racking and pain. You said the sick can lay hands on the the, 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 the believer can lay hands on the sick and share recover. Yes. And I have, I got my hands like this right here. I looked at him and I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Amen. And all of a sudden, all the pain that my stomach, my body was experiencing, I'm looking for it now. Because it's gone. Amen. And from that day to this day, I've never experienced that pain again. Amen. I've never Amen. experienced that pain again. And then, on top of that, I used to have migraine headaches. Migraine headache was would, would cause me to just go shut myself up and just don't want to be bothered by no one. Back then, we had standbacks. You ever know what a standback is? It's a powder. Just like a, medication. it's a medication. It's for headaches. You had Tylenol, you had Stanback, you had uh, Hypoprofen, and all that stuff. But none of that stuff was working. And my mic, and I had the mic, the, the migraine headache. And I remember what he showed me about the my stomach. And I said, Lord, I, I applied the same thing. I said, Lord, my head is hurting. And I know this is not coming from you. I have two hands. You said the believer can lay hands on sickness, share recover. I lay hands upon my head, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that demonic, that, that demon spirit from the headache to get off of me right now in the name of Jesus, and I will not have a headache no more in Jesus' name. I really didn't know I prayed. I just prayed whatever, whatever. And that headache, that, that headache, that micro headache just left me. It tried to come back later on, but I said, no. I said, you know, God, God has healed me from you. You're not coming back. Go, in Jesus' name. He went away and never came back. Mm -hmm. I never had another migraine headache. You see, 
when we understand what God is saying in his word, we can apply God's word and God will honor his word. But you got to believe what you're asking for. And you got to be willing to apply what you're asking for. See, the Bible said, be not a forgetful hearer of the word, but be ye what? Do. A doer of the word. You have to apply what you have learned in order for God to bag it up. If you learn it and you don't do anything with it, God ain't got nothing to back up. God will not allow his word to fall to the ground if we would only believe it. If we would only believe it. And I tell you, from this day, from that day until this day, I, my, I never had that issue with my stomach no more. I never had that issue with my head, with my head anymore. Now, he tried to attack me in different other areas. Now, even when it comes to a cold or, 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 or flu or something, when that, when that spirit come around me, I feel a, a, a real strong itch right here on the tip of my nose. And, and I know exactly what it is. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, this germ trying to attach itself to my body, I rebuke it right now before it even, before it even grab a hold. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and I command you to go. The reason how I know what it is because there was, I, I, I put it to the test. I didn't say something. <laughs> and I got sick as all I got sick as I don't know what. But then, but I knew that from that point on, and I never let I never allowed it to happen no more. Amen. Why? Because when you learn better, you do better. God wants you to learn how to walk in divine health. You can walk in divine health on purpose. Amen. When the doctor told me four years ago that I had cancer, I mean, it just devastated me. It devastated me. And I walked in that doctor's office. I was so full of joy, so cheerful and everything. But when I walked out, I'm thinking, wow. God, I walked outside and looked up toward heaven. I said, God, that doctor just lied on me. Yeah. He said, I have cancer. And according to your word, you, you sent your word and you healed him and delivered him from that destruction. Cancer is destruction. That's not that's not your that's not your word for me, and I, I tell you what, I didn't say nothing to my wife about this when I went home. I didn't say nothing to no one about it. I only talked to God and the devil about that what that doctor said, and uh, and when I and, and and I went on a three day fast, and I went when I went back to the hospital, the doctor said I got good news for you this time. He said I said okay, what's the good news? He said. That what I saw before is no longer there. I said, "Praise God!" He looked at me, real startled, because I'm talking about God in His office. You cannot be ashamed of who you are as a child of God. You will stop the power of God from operating you when you start be ashamed of Him. He said, "You be ashamed of me." I'm going. I'm going to be ashamed of you. I believe that God wants us to understand that his medicine for us is one of the, one of the, one of the greatest things that we can ever get a hold to in our life if we would only believe it. The Bible says again in Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now notice that the psalm said the word came and healed it came and healed. Not only did it came to heal, but it also delivered. Yeah. Delivered him. From what? From destruction. What is cancer? Destruction. Cancer is destruction, right? That's right. What is tumors and stuff? Isn't that destruction? Yes. When God sent his word, he sent his word to heal, to deliver from death. Amen. Y'all, y'all see what I'm saying? Amen. Because when we understand that God's going, you going, you going, you you ready, you ready to walk in another level. Amen. For I am the Lord who heals you. That's what the Lord said, right? I am the Lord who heals you. I will give you back your health and heal your wounds. Amen. Therefore, confess. You know, sometimes you have to do what. You have to confess what. Your sins. Because a lot of times 
We are sick because of sin. <laughs> I said, yeah, everybody just said, okay, okay. <laughs> But I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what's. I'm telling you that God. I'm telling you that God wants to deliver you. And I'm telling you a lot of times your healing comes through the way of repentance. Because a lot of times we have done something to cause that sickness to come on our body. Like me, when I was growing up, I did something to cause my stomach to be ate up like that. What was I doing? Moonshine. I was drinking moonshine. Amen. On an empty stomach. And it ate my stomach up. You don't know what they be putting in that stuff. It's not like that stuff they make today. Back then, that stuff was raw and was good. It was, strong. Yeah. it was strong. But the thing about it, folks, God is stronger than that. Yeah. The Word of God is stronger than that. Remember? I said, Lord, I have hands. My body's in pain. I said, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on my body. I said, body, be healed in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, that pain was going out of my body. Going out of my body. Amen. I didn't have to call someone to come lay hands on me and pray for me. Yeah. I wanted to, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't go to a pastor friend of mine and ask him, say, can you please pray for me? I couldn't. All I had was my Bible and my faith in God. Mm. Now my faith in God was it was it was just being established. Yeah. But nevertheless, it worked at a time when I thought nothing about anything. I was focused on what I was going through. And God said, Get up and read your Bible. And I read my Bible like He told me. See, I followed his instructions. I could have just said, this, I, I did somebody mess me. I'm just going to go back to bed and lay down. I could have just went lay back down. Yeah. And I could have been sick even to this day. Yeah. But instead, I obeyed yeah. the Spirit of God. Yeah. And because of that, I'm walking in divine health. Mm -hmm. And been walking in it ever since. Mm -hmm. And I'm teaching others to walk in divine health. Mm -hmm. You know, most people that have come to this ministry, people used to come to this ministry just to get healed. Mm. And once they got healed, they walked, they went on back. There was a woman who came to the ministry when we was in another building over here on Florin, over here on Fulton. Fulton. She come in the church that she probably going to another church, but she said it was too late for her to go to that church. She said, so I decided to come here. And when I when I, when I when I began to pray for the people, she come up and stand right in front of me for prayer. I didn't even touch this woman. Mm. This woman started shaking. She became totally free mm. from anxieties and something else that she was dealing depression. with. Depression. She became totally free. God delivered her. She went back to her pharmacist where she always buy her medicine. And they said, aren't you going to buy your medicine? They don't. You got to get it. This is the day you're supposed to be buying it. They said, she said, oh, no, I don't need that no more. And the pharmacist said, what do you mean you don't need it no more? She said, oh, I've been healed. God healed me. Then the pharmacist, they came to my church. <laughs> my goodness. The Lord. They did. They come to the church. Amen. And God, and God touched them too. Matter of fact, they are friends now. They are friends now. They still got their pharmacy. But they are, they are our friends. Amen. I'm telling you, when you operate in faith, God will bring you to a place where you thought that you would never arrive. Faith will cause you to walk into a level with God that you've never walked in before. And the people around you will think, who, who, who is this guy? Where did he come from? I'm just, a, I'm just like you. But the thing about it, there are certain areas in the Bible that a lot of people gravitate to, and this is the one for me, healing. Because mm -hmm. when God healed me yeah. of that disease, he, he supplied me a place to stay. He gave me everything I needed to be comfortable there. And then, after I got settled in real good, he sent someone to, to ask me to come and help him 
to pastor the church. He was an older gentleman. He was pastoring two churches. He said, I want you to go to this church on every other Sunday because I'm getting too old to do all this. And I had to drive a mile on that Sunday morning that I had to go. I first started going to that church. There was only two people in that church. There was two old deacons. And they were, this is when I was a Baptist. I was a permanent Baptist, you know. I was permanent. <laughs> <laughs> and so I began, so I I began to I began to go down there to this church, and uh, these deacons they didn't even bring Bible to church. They didn't have no reason to bring Bible to church because there was no preacher there to preach the word to them. Mm -hmm. And now God sent me down there. Next thing I know, I started having Sunday school. I started arriving early. Started having Sunday school. The deacons started bringing their Bibles. They start telling other people. They start coming. In, they start bringing their Bible. They start coming. People start coming back. Church got full. Church got full. Now, I'm. I'm. I, now that the church is up and running real good, God said, "Now I want you to go to go to go to Bible school." And I said, "God, I can't leave these people. I can't leave these people." And uh, He didn't say nothing else to me about it. But the next Sunday, when I came to church. When I drove up on the parking lot, there was this, my deacons, they were walking up to the, to the church, and there was a man walking between them. I didn't see the man. All I saw was the Spirit of God. You know, like, you ever seen just the Spirit of God, just like a, a, a I don't know how to describe it. it you, you can see, you can see, but you don't see the man. You can see the, the Spirit all over him. And so, and so I walked, I walked, I said, oh, okay, Lord, I see you, 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 you're doing something here. So I walked in the church that Sunday, and I told the people, I said, this Sunday would be my last Sunday with you guys, but God has already provided you with someone to take over. And I said, this man right here, he's going to be my relief. Wow. And so I left that church, I went back to the Bible, I, went, I, 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 I preached that Sunday, and I, and I went to, uh, back home, and I didn't go back to that church no more. That church, was start, that church started thriving, started mm. thriving. Praise the Lord. Whole, the whole church, I mean, people coming from all around to come to that church. It started thriving. Amen. Now, God told me to go to Raymond Bible Training Center, so I, I didn't have money to go to Raymond. I said, God, I don't have no money. See, when you understand what God is, how God is directing you, you follow his instruction, he'll always provide for you. When I was sick, he provided healing for me. When I was broke, he provided money for me. When I, he told me to go somewhere, he always provided for me to go where he asked me to go. And so, and so here I am getting ready to go to Raymond Bible Training Center, didn't have no money. And uh, one of my friends, uh, he wasn't really a friend, but he was an acquaintance of mine. He was a salesman, a traveling salesman. And, uh, and I was talking to him. I said, God telling me to go to Bible school. I said, but uh, I don't know how I'm going to go because I don't have no money. I wasn't saying that to get no money from him. He said, how much you need? I said, uh, I'm going to need about $2,000 to get into school and to find me a place to stay when I get there and all this. I'm going to need about $2,000 altogether. He said, Okay. I'll give it to you tomorrow. I said, what? He said, no problem. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Amen. So I got the money, and I went to school, and I got to school. I realized that when I got to school, I didn't have my personal information with me. I had left it at home. So I had to drive all the way back from Tulsa, Oklahoma, back to Alabama <laughs> to get my information and then drive, and then, and then I said, now, Lord, what am I going to do now? I did the money that you gave me to get into school and get me a place to stay, yeah. I don't spend uh, riding yeah. up and down the highway. And uh, the same guy. No. <laughs> no. What? The same guy. The same guy. God sent him back across my path again, and I told him what had happened. He said, no problem. Here you go. Six hundred more dollars. He gave me the money. I went on back out there, got into school. I was in school for a whole year. I had a place to stay. 
and I and I and I was just, I'm laying in my bed one day, and I was just falling asleep. I had been reading my Bible, read my Bible, just laying, laying in bed, read my Bible. Then I started to fall asleep. And time I started falling asleep, it was storming outside. And time I started falling asleep, God said, "Get up and go and rebuke the storm." I said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Get up and go rebuke the storm. He said it again. I got up, put my clothes on, and I went and got in my car. I thought this is this is a night of testimony. This is a night of, of sharing what God has done. Amen. And so I got in my car and I drove out into that storm. And it was right, it, it was down about all Roberts University. Because that's why I was standing down in that area. And I drove out into that storm. And I was coming to this intersection. I cracked my window. And I spoke out from the from loud as I can. I said, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the elements of this of the skies. And I speak to this rain. I speak to this wind. And I command you to cease your activity now. Then all of a sudden, shoo, everything just, I said, whoa. I had never seen nothing like that before. Amen. But I heard, I read that Jesus spoke to the storm. And then when I did that, I was so in awe of the authority that God had put in my mouth. You have that same authority. Amen. You have that same ability. That's why God wants you to understand. You have to start speaking over your body. When the enemy come against your health, when the enemy come against your body, you don't sit there and start talking about what the devil is doing. You take a stand against it. God has given you the power over your health. You can speak life or you can speak death. It's up to you. See, when you understand who you are as a child of God, you won't accept nothing from the devil willingly. He has to push it on you. And then you better be careful. That you don't accept it. But when I spoke to that storm, that really got my attention. The next time I would lie in my bed, read my Bible, and God spoke to me again. Time my head hit the pillow. I see this big tornado coming, this big wind, this big roller uh, coming across the face of the earth. And, 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 and I said, God, what a great move of your spirit. And God said, that's not a move of my spirit. This is darkness and it's coming upon the face of the earth. He said, warn my people. And I said, God, I'm not a pastor. Why are you telling me this? Everything that God told me back then is starting to come to pass now. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It started to come to pass now. God took me to Mount Transfiguration back in 2000, back in 1989. Now he's taking me to, to Mount Transfiguration right here in 2023. The second time I mentioned about Transfiguration. The glory of God is about to come upon the church of God, like the church had never experienced before, and many people are going to be caught up in His glory, and they're going to receive what God is doing. But then there's going to be some. There's going to be a great falling away because people are not going to know how to. They're not going to know how to accept it. They're not going to know what's going on. That's going to become. That's going, that's going to be a great falling away. Very. You. It's already. It's already happening in the church even today. Yes, it is. It's already happening. People that going to church, but they're not going to church. And this is why God is. This is why God is bringing about this great manifestation of His glory, because God's getting ready to. God's getting ready to be glorified in the church once again. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Mm. Now I don't know why this is not a, a preaching message, <laughs> but this is good to, for us to understand, though. This is good because you see, when we understand what God is saying to us, you will not. Hesitate when you are confronted by the enemy. You hold your ground. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 
6, verse number 10, said, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. And then, and then he tells you, put on the whole arm of God. God wants you to understand that you have been given a position above the kingdom of darkness. Above the kingdom of darkness. He says in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Isaiah 41, 10, he said, Behold, I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you by the right hand of my righteousness. And verse number 11 said, All they that are incensed against you shall be ashamed. They shall be as nothing. They shall perish. <sighs> That's why we have to understand who we are as children of God. Because, see, if we don't understand who we are, we're going to be taken advantage of, and the devil is going to take us for lunch. And you're going to be the lunch. Mm. <laughs> uh, Y'all get anything out of this tonight? Amen. Yeah. Because I, 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 I'm just being open. I'm just being open tonight. I'm not trying to preach no message to you tonight. I'm just being open. Now, when God started you, when God started ministering to me through me, when I came back from Rainbow Bible Training Center, I started going from hospital to hospital to hospital, ministering to the sick, wow. and and I started going to the church, but I got kicked out. Uh oh. I did. The Baptist church they kicked me out. I couldn't they won't let me preach there no more. They kicked me out. Amen. So I started I started going to the convalescent home. You know what a convalescent home is? Yeah. I started going to the convalescent home, ministering to the elderly people, to the people that couldn't help themselves. It was so I got I, I became so popular they started calling me their pastor. Amen. And I was going to the prisons. And I was going to the jailhouses. I went to the prison and I preached to the open population and the power of God came in so strong and the, the warden came to me and said Will you, uh, we have a deaf war people in here would you mind going and minister to them I said oh <laughs> I said okay I'll go I'll go I went into the deaf ward where the people on death row and I started ministering to, them, to those people they was in there with AIDS they was in there they didn't they didn't have nothing to live for, so they're doing everything in them. Amen. And so I ministered to them the word of God. And I, as I got done ministering to them the word of God, and I started, I said, now I'm going to pray for you. all y'all that won't pray, I'm going to pray for you. And I started, and, I, and as I started praying, God began to deal with my heart. He, I'm, I'm praying for this man. I'm to lay my hand upon this man. I'm praying for this man. My, and, and all of a sudden, I hear, I hear the spirit of God saying, pray for the blood system. The disease is in the blood system. Pray for the, and while he, I'm, I'm praying for this man, and God is talking to me in my ear, and I had to reroute my prayer while I'm praying for this man. Then all of a sudden, the power got. That man were not on, they were not on delivered from AIDS. They were they was delivered also from death row. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Y'all, this is the power of God. I'm talking about. I'm not just saying yeah. something. This yeah. is actually happening. This actually happened, amen. And the people, and and, and the people, they started getting, they started getting healed. They, the prison, my God, they 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 use love when I come around now. Hallelujah, amen. See, I was in prison and you visited me not. Yeah. I was uh, hungry and you gave me no food, amen. Jesus, you did it to the least of them. You did it unto me. If you didn't do it to the least of them, you did it not even unto me. When God began to show me all this and started to use me in these areas, I didn't know what to think. I was just enjoying it. Mm. I was. Amen. I was enjoying it. Now, I'm starting to minister to the rest homes and jailhouse and stuff. Now, the apartment complexes, they started having special meetings because the church wanted to become. So the people that wanted me to come, they was gather up in the apartment complex in the guest room, the part of the game room or what they call it. And, 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 and they would they would ask me to come and preach. And so I would go there and I preach. I mean they all kinds of sick people coming down. I'm praying for these people and I'm going down the road praying for them. People falling out, people getting healed, people getting healed. Then there was this young boy about 
he was a very young boy, about eight, nine year old. And I laid my hands on him, started praying for him. He started screaming. I said, what's the matter? Because I had covered his ears. He started screaming. I said, what's going on? She said, his mother said, he got ear laid. When you touch, when you put, when you cover the ear, it's sending off a, a, a loud sound. And uh, he couldn't handle it. I said, take those ear hearing aids out. Take them out. She took those hearing aids out of this boy's ear. And I put my hands over his ear again. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command these eardrums to be restored and be healed now. Be open in Jesus' name. And then I stood back like, I saw you saw Ben, I saw Ben Hinn doing this a lot. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Betty, <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and the boy could hear. The boy could hear. And the mother and the family was so excited. Mm. Amen. It only take a miracle. See, God is setting you up right now. He's setting you up right now, believe it or not. I saw his glory tonight. And he's setting you up tonight. He's setting you up that when you step out of your comfort zone, when the opportunity presents itself, and you begin to pray for someone, believe what you're doing, God's going to bag it up, and that person that you're praying for is going to be healed, going to be delivered, going to be set free, or whatever it is, whatever the case may be. And that person is going to look at you and back up and say, wow, who are you? <laughs> Amen. And all of a sudden, the power of God can start flowing through you. You can't wait to find somebody else to pray for. You can't wait to find somebody else to pray for. Why? Because you have experienced his glory. You have experienced his anointing to set the captives free. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach the living to the captive, recover the sight to the blind, to set a loop to them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. When I go to these foreign countries, I don't go try to go in my own strength. I don't try to go in my own ability. I go believing and trusting in God. And, and when I preach, the man of God said, everything that you said happened. I said, wow. I said, That's, I had, that was God. It wasn't me, it was God. Amen. And then this last time in November, there was so many miracles take place. So many miracles take place. Why? Because I believe. I believe. And y'all, some of y'all had... Y'all get part of it because y'all planted some seed concerning that. Amen. So a lot of it is going to go to your account. I'm done for tonight. But right now I'm going to release that anointing. Like I, I'm going to release that anointing. It's, it's on me right now. Oh, it's on me. You experienced it already. <laughs> oh, my God. His glory. His glory is in this place. His glory is in this place. Yes, Lord. I have shared, Father, testimonies. I have shared how you brought this ministry forth. I poured out my soul Because you showed me your glory once again tonight. You took me back into that place in the spirit realm <laughs> that I have long, long to see again in the spirit. Yes. And I saw, Lord God, that glory coming down upon you and upon Moses and upon Elias and upon Peter, James and John and Father as I'm standing there the glory that I'm looking at is also beginning to rest upon me Father let it rest upon these people under the sound of my voice 
Let this anointing begin to rest upon them. Let the people begin to experience your glory like never before. Show yourself strong on their behalf. Father, for those that are in need of a healing, at the beginning, Father, I have bound the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and diseases. I have bound them already. Now, Father, I release the anointing and your power. I release the anointing and your power to rest upon your people. I command this sickness, this disease, to leave their bodies now in Jesus' name. I command you by the thought of Jesus Christ, come out! Come out now in Jesus' name and touch them no more. <clears throat> and Father, I take a stand against every wicked and tormented spirit of oppression and depression. I bind it up in the spiritual realm. And I command you to loose your grip on that mind. Loose your grip on that heart. Let that man, let that woman go now in Jesus' name. Father, let the Persian fire of the Holy Ghost now begin to rest upon them. Let the Persian fire of the Holy Ghost begin to rest upon them now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may your kingdom come. May your will be done in their lives, in earth as it is in heaven. Let them experience your goodness and your mercy. Now, Lord God. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let this sickness leave their body. I speak to that cancer. I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that ligament in the name of Jesus. I command you to dry up. Leave that body. Leave that body now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Shaka Manda Reki Rasa Kara. Om Direse Kalabako. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Be just like that one with the issue of blood. Be just like the wound in your blood. Say, Lord, if I may just touch the hem of your garment, I shall be whole. And then just reach out by faith and just touch the hem of his garment. Let the virtue be released now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the virtue be released now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is right now. There are going importations right now. The spirit of importation right now is being released. There it is. There it is. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. There go your healing. There go your healing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, shut up, okay. Someone is right now being healed of colon cancer. Someone right now is being healed of colon cancer. Shut up, okay. Shut up, okay. Shut up, okay. Shut up, okay. Oh, Rabbaseke. I hear prostate. Someone being healed right now of prostate. Your prostate glands are swollen. God is touching right now. Your prostate glands are returning to normal in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just stand up and give God praise. Stand up and give God praise for it right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, shut out of aki. So cold out of aki. Kosha out of aki. Come out of a kosha kid of aki. Oh, cut out of breast cancer. Breast cancer. Lumps on the breast right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking to a female now. Breast cancer. Lumps on the breast right now. In the name of Jesus. I command these lumps, this breast cancer to be dissolved now in Jesus' name. I speak to this ligament. Come out now in Jesus' name. And touch this child of God no more. You will not destroy this child of God. 
Fear has no place there. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shut up. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we are still.
Anyone else? And I don't go down the back of the Anyone else? Father, I bless you. I bless your name. I bless your people. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Glory to God. I believe there's people that are with us on the internet. I believe that forgiveness is manifesting. Amen. I believe healing is manifesting. Amen. And there's hearts and lives being touched and changed. Glory to God. <laughs> well, we serve a good God. We serve a good God, you know? And if you will just understand what God is saying to you, you're already healed. You're already healed. Father, I just thank you once again. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in the life of your people. I give you all the praise and all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. We're going to go ahead and take our offering up now. Those that want us by the internet, you want to sow a seed, you're welcome to do so. You can go to my website, LibrarianMinistries.com. Amen. You can sow your seed there, or you can go to your, use your cash app. You can sow your seed through the cash app. Amen. That's Larry Bergens. Amen. You can... Also, I, I, I just realized today, you can also sow your seed through Vimeo. Amen. Amen. You can sow your seed through Vimeo. I just realized that today that I have Vimeo also. Amen. Venmo? Venmo, yeah. Venmo. That's how I said it. Venmo. I said Vimeo. But it's Venmo. Venmo. You can sow your seed that way also. Just type my name, Larry Burgess, and you can see it come up. Amen. And, uh, and I want you to know that every time you plant a seed into this ministry, you said, Pastor, we believe in what you're doing for the kingdom of God. And we want to be a part of that. And when you sow your seed into this ministry, you're not only being a part of that, but the anointing that rests upon this ministry, this healing anointing that rests upon this ministry, is beginning to rest upon you. It begins to rest upon you. Amen. Especially when you become... Uh, a supporter of this ministry, Amen. So I believe that God wants to, God wants to, to bring you to a place. And I didn't even, I've got these notes that I printed out. I didn't even you for one scripture offer, offer this note tonight. So that means we'll use it again another time. But go on, so you see, that's LarryBurgessMinistries.com. That's Larry Burgess, L-A-R-R-Y, B-I-R-G-A-N-S. Ministries, M I N I S T R I S dot com. Plant your seed and believe God. If you want to sow by credit card, you can sow by credit card. Amen. We have a, we can do that here also. We, we take credit cards here. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice that as they plant their seed tonight, they will plant it in faith, Father. Because they believe that the best is yet to come. They're not sowing in unbelief. They're sowing in faith. And I agree, Father, that every need is met according to <coughs> your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and sow your seed.
Father, we thank you. We bless you, Father. We thank you for the seed that is being sold tonight, Father, whether it be tithes or offering. We thank you, Father, for the seed that have come into the house today as a whole. Father, let not one seed go unnoticed. Show yourself strong, Father, on the behalf of your people that support this ministry. Whether they given today or last week, or whether they send it through the internet, through the, through the mail, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to cause them to begin to experience supernatural overflow. Supernatural overflow. I bless your people, Father. I release the anointing upon your people to prosper. You said, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Father, I release the anointing to prosper upon your people. Let every still in spirit be bound now in Jesus' name and loose from his assignment concerning the finances. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we say, mighty coming. Mighty coming to your people, to the tithers, to the givers, to the supporters of the work of God. Mighty coming in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you that it is coming and that we have more than enough. Every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we give you all the glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You hear the name, you say, Pastor, I've never been born again. I've never been saved. You might say, Pastor, I have been born again. I have been saved. But I backslid. And, and right now I don't feel good about life. Because I don't think that God could ever forgive me. Pastor, will you please, do you think God will forgive me? Yes, I know God will forgive you. And I know that he will not only forgive you, but he'll restore you if you ask him. Amen. So if that's you, you are out of fellowship with God. You may, you may have never invited Jesus into your heart. And I know that you have a desire to be transformed from darkness to light. You want to be saved. You want to be born again. I'm talking to you. And if this is you, you want to be born again? God is waiting on you. It's you, you say you want to rededicate your life to the Lord? God is waiting on you. God is married to the backslider. He's not going to write you off just because you made a mistake. He's going to give you an opportunity to make things right. And that's what he's doing right now. He's giving you an opportunity to make things right. If that's you, I believe today is your brand new birthday, spiritually speaking. Will you please say this prayer with me? And I want you to say it from your heart, not because I'm asking you to. I want you to say it because you mean it. Because if you mean it, it's going to touch the heart of God. And when it touches the heart of God, he's going to see that it's not just lip service. It's from your heart. And he's going to touch your heart because you touch his heart. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Create in me. Create in me. A right spirit. A right spirit. And renew in me. And renew in me. A clean heart. A new heart. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. That you are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. That you died for my sins. You died for my sins. Because I believe this. Because I believe this. And confess with my mouth. And confess with my mouth. I'm saved. I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me. For saving me. Amen. You said that prayer. I believe right now with all my heart that you just gave God an invitation to visit you. To come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. And with that invitation, I believe that he's already there. Father, I pray for those that said that prayer. I pray, Father, that you would show yourself strong on their behalf. Bring them to a place, Father, of inner peace and inner healing. Help them to be strong in their walk with you, Father. Help them 
to let go of their past and, and not look back. Help them, Father, to understand that now they are born again. They are new creatures created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And that old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Let them know, Father, that from this day forth, that you are their Lord and their God. They can count on you. They can trust you. If they just open up and begin to confide in you, they can trust you, Lord. I just pray, Father, that they will know that. And as they come to understand that, Father, you're going to meet them right at that point of their need. I bless them now, Father, in Jesus' name. God bless you. God, we, I believe God hands upon you, and I believe that he loves you with a love that cannot be denied. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Is everybody hearts and minds are clear? Amen. Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet, those that have joined us tonight. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that what we experience here tonight, that they experience their in their private place, in their homes, in their jobs, or wherever they are viewing this message. And I pray, Father, that it have the same effect upon them as it has upon us here. Let your anointing rest upon them, lifting burdens and destroying yokes and setting the captives free. Holy And Father, I give you all the praise and glory for, for what you're going to do in their life, what you're currently doing in their lives. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you. Don't forget to join us on Tuesday night. And I believe you'll be glad you did. Until then, God bless you. See you then. Bye-bye.